our last show. The, the finality of this every year, when we get to the end of the conference finals, and here we go. Do you think they go. got cable in Montana? You're going to be there for a... For the match. Yeah, I, I'm almost positive, Chuckster. Just, I mean, what do you he's think trying to get on? sentimental, but you, obviously you're not. Oh, man, we're not sentimental. Stop that. Hey, man. Hey, we're working for two years straight. It's our <laughs> last show. Make it a good one. Really? On. Highlight <laughs> of game six. Time. Two years in a row, Chad, we've been working. Yeah. So Giannis, a no-go. But Trey Young would give it a run. Yeah, he tried, but, man, it was rough. Yeah, he just didn't have his timing. Uh, he was, he had his mobility, but he didn't have his time and maybe to knock shots in. Well, he, had, he had no conditioning either. Uh, that was the main thing. He, he missed too many shots. He had conditioning, man. You got to be able to play basketball. Meantime, hot start for the Bucks after that 13 to oh. 4 lead, and now it's 15 to 4. Hmm. Young did hit that floater, and then Brooke Lopez once again. Hmm. Off Jeff ball. Teague, the Bully ball. former Hawk, connects for three. Didn't get a lot of playing time, but hit that shot. Got to be ready. Hmm. Young takes it himself. Trey Young at 14 points, 4 of 17, 0 of 6 from that three. That man right and there. Five turnovers. He turned it on when they needed the last two games. Hmm. Don't off the glass. Jonathan ahead of the pack. Oh. So it's 47-43 at the half, Milwaukee. Third quarter, what a, a span of two minutes and 44 seconds. Chris Middleton scored 16 straight Milwaukee points. You, know, they, you thought they would remember oh. it tonight. They just let this guy heat up. And yeah, guess he got what, Ernie? super aggressive. He's on fire. Super aggressive. Boom, oh, shakalaka. He's on fire. <laughs> A 23-point third quarter oh, for Middleton. Double step back. Like I... Drew Holiday had 11 in the third, had 16 of his, or 17 of his 27 in the second half. Bobby Portis inside. Uh, Drew, Drew Holiday's aggression on offense and defense turned his entire series around. Atlanta, man, they had a valiant fourth quarter effort there. Cam Reddish connected. Defense turns into offense here. Good catch. Tell you what, man. Me and Kenny were talking in the back, man. Cam Reddish played fantastic for the Hawks. Yeah. He's going to be a valuable piece for them. So oh. they cut it from 22 all the way down to six. Man. But up top, there's Brooke Lopez from Drew Holiday. The Bucs want to cut down on their turnovers against the Suns. And they took advantage of Atlanta turnovers in this one. 25 points off 16 Atlanta TOs. And the Eastern Conference hardware belongs to the Milwaukee Bucks, 118 to 107 winners over the Atlanta Hawks. And crazy, the last three games of the series, no lead changes in those games. In fact, it's ha it happened four times in the six games where a team wow. went wire to wire. So the season ends for the Hawks. Here's Nate McMillan. I want to, uh, you know, thank the organization, uh, you know, Tony, uh, Jamie, and Travis uh, for the opportunity to work with this group. Uh, they've been a great group all season long. You know, it was a huge challenge uh, for them uh, once, you know, Coach Pierce was let go. And I, you know, I challenged those guys to be better, uh, to do better. Um, to sacrifice, to commit to each other, and they did. Um, and, you know, it just shows that uh, when you get a group of guys just working together um, for the same common goal, uh, they have talent. Every NBA team has talent. Uh, you can win games. And, you know, what they uh, did uh, this season is, is no, it wasn't luck wasn't involved. Uh, it was hard work. It was sacrificing. It was committing uh, to each other. It was trusting each other. Uh, and the effort was there every single night. And, uh, you know, they uh, played them themselves into the Eastern Conference Finals, uh, you know, with a chance to uh, go to uh, the finals. But, you know, Milwaukee is a really good team. They're a really good team. Uh, I know they was missing Giannis. 
Uh, but that team uh, was on a mission. They've been on a mission for the last couple of years. Um, you know, every time we tried to make a run tonight, they answered. And, uh, you know, they just, you know, Bud and his crew uh, really just did a solid job in this series. Nate McMillan, when he took over, he went 27 and 11 to uh, finish out the regular season, 10 and 8 in the postseason, so 37 and 19 as the interim head coach of the Atlanta Hawks. Is that priority one in, in your mind, for saying, I want this guy? For the Hawks? Yeah. Uh, I think priority one, I think that priority is going to work itself out. I think priority one is John Collins uh, because you have a, a group that either is going to grow together or they're going to separate when they start to hit strides. And, uh, you know, so I think the talent, he said that group is talented. Your talent is, I think, priority one uh, for the Hawks because um, it's really, I think, up to Nate. No, I think, uh, I think Nate's priority one. Mm -hmm. Nate is priority one. Yeah, but it's still his the choice. Yeah, no, but I'm saying getting him signed is priority one. The, the, the John Collins thing is going to be interesting mm -hmm. uh, because he wants a max deal. And the way the NBA works, you can't pay everybody. Uh, so uh, it's going to be very – first of all, he played terrific, but you just can't pay everybody. And you have to ask yourself, if I give this guy all this money – are we going to get this for in the playoffs next year? Because if you look at the Eastern Conference, they won't be favored in the Eastern Conference next year to get this far. Because, you know, Philly's going to do something. They're not betting Milwaukee. They're not betting New Jer Bro Brooklyn, excuse me. Uh, the Celtics, uh, I, you, I don't even think you can really say they're better than the Celtics. But once you start giving guys long-term deals, the first question you sh have to ask yourself is, What's our ceiling with this guy? Especially when you start getting. So don't you think up. that's that, that's what I'm saying? Don't you think that's a big priority? Then? No, like, you got to get that that's coach. The, that's no, because no, you can't take. No, I'm not going. I think uh, Nate McMillan is. It's in his court. No, no, but not I'm saying. But I'm court. saying. Well, the Hawks need to make Nate their priority because that did dude did a hell of a job. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think if you do sign Nate, you know the way they played, you know how they played, I think you can attract a couple more. I want to say big name, but medium name free agents, you know, a couple more, you know, veterans. And, and Chuck, I agree with you. It's going to be interesting about John Collins. I know a couple years ago he turned down $90 million. I don't know what the max is, so hopefully he gets somewhere in between that. Let's take a look, Let's take a look at, their, at their season recap, if we can. And I want to say something. You know, man, um, whoever's been drafting for the Hawks and making trades and signs, they've done a fabulous job. Clint Capella is a great pickup. Bogdanovich. Well, Travis Schlink is their GM. Uh, Travis Schlink is a uh, uh, Gallinari play fantastic. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, Lou Williams was a great trade. DeAndre, they, listen, they, listen, think about it. They didn't have DeAndre Hunter and missing. Me and Ken were uh, talking in the back. Herder's fantastic too. Man, we love Cam Reddish. He missed a lot of time and came back and played terrific. So the Hawks got some big decisions to make. Yeah, kept them in this game tonight. But, um, again, on the Nate McMillan thing, I th you've got you've to reward him to the point where he doesn't even think about going. Yeah, and that, that, the, the difference, that, and that's what I'm saying, where the difference is it's going to be Nate's decision. Okay, they're going to offer him without question, and he's going to be his decision. With, Ken, I mean, with, um, with John Collins, it's really the Hawks' decision. Difference. They, they, they have to decide if he's the guy. Yeah. So it, it's two different people making two different decisions. Yeah, but they can make a great decision. The, the, the Hawks are going to be able to uh, get their cake and eat it too because if they say, okay, we're not giving you the max, but if somebody else gives him the max, they could do a sign and trade. So the Hawks yeah, are but I'm still sign and trade is not the same team. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying, though, they can get – if they make that big money – they get to poach off another team. They can do a great sign and trade. The Atlanta Hawks, their season comes to an end, 118-107 to 107 in six games against the Milwaukee Bucks in the Eastern Conference Finals. Back with more on Inside in just a minute. The scene inside the uh, Milwaukee locker room. Uh, Pretty subdued. Fairly serene. I like that, though. They ain't done nothing yet. <laughs>